Today we are going to build the app you can see on the screen here. So this is a Flux Uncensored Image Generator app that is built from totally from scratch. So we are going to be using Cursor, we are going to be using Claw 3.5 Sonnet and some other AI coding tools. It's a very easy step-by-step -step approach. It's going to be a full tutorial. So you can see here we have some sliders, prompt strength, quality. We have image to image. We have a prompt, of course. We can select our app uh, aspect ratio, uh, file source. We have even have this disable safety check for our uncensored images. So let me kind of have show you how this works now. We can just enter a prompt, right? Uh, we want PNG. We want uh, 16 by 9. We want high quality and high prompt strength. Click on generate image. This is going to send our request to the replicate API and get a response back, right? Okay, so you can see. Yeah, we got an image of a cat. Uh, let's do something that is a bit more challenging here, right? Okay, so let's head over to Google here. Let's copy this image URL here because we can do image to image input with this URL here. So let's run with this prompt. I'm not going to read this out loud. Uh, uh, let's do 916. Let's select PNG. It doesn't matter too much. Uh, if we don't cross off this now, let's try to generate the image and see what kind of response we get, right? Okay, so here we see we got kind of a generic photo, right? Let's say if I click on this button, let's do it again. And now let's see if the image model will adhere to our input prompt, right? Okay, so I'm gonna blur a part of this, but you get the point, right? So this is working pretty good and our disable safety check uh, input is working perfect. So that's just a few of the things you can customize this to whatever you want. Uh, but for now, uh, let me walk you through step by step how you can actually create your own uh, flux and censored image generator app for yourself. Uh, I think there's a lot of things to learn here So I think we're just gonna dive into it and start building. Okay, so I kind of want to divide the workflow into kind of two uh, or more parts today so the first part is gonna be more like setting up our front end right and we're gonna do our back end and we kind of want to do the front end first, then we want to do the back end. That is kind of how li I like to work when coding with AI. So for the front end, we're going to use something. Let me put this in white, right? Okay. We're going to use something that is called, we can do this. It's called Shad, CN. So this is more of like a pre-built components we can pick from when using Next.js. So what we want is this front-end components that is going to speak with our back-end, right? And today our back-end is going to be Flux. So that is the image generator we're going to use from Replicate. And we also want to have like a branch. Uh, I guess I probably talked about this in the intro where we have this part here that is kind of uncensored, right? I guess I spelled that wrong, but that's fine. So this part is going to be uncensored, so we can kind of check off something here. So this could be like a checkbox or something, so we can run the uncensored version of Flux, or the safety check uh, It's not going to count, right? So I think that's going to be interesting. Another change I have made uh, regarding my previous videos is now we have this small pre-built prompts here in like a markdown file that kind of have these instructions that it's very easy to set up our front end and our back end. We have a special version for Chad CN, uh, but you're going to see all of that when we get into the video now. So I think that's just a basic uh, uh, overview of the workflow we are going to be using today. So let's just head over to Cursor and let's start building. Okay, so for today's front end, I thought we can use uh, ShadCN. So this is almost like a component library. You can kind of pick our components we want to use in our front end. So uh, let's head over to Cursor because we're going to be using that today. So you can see here I have prepared some prompts. We will be running in our chat feature here over on Cursor. So I'm not going to go through every single line here, but uh, you can see we have some instructions how to set up the basics Next.js Chad CN app in a front-end folder. And I'm just going to give some bash instructions here. I'm going to show you soon why I want to do this, because this can speed up our workflow and we can get like a very, yeah, template style of building different apps, right? 
So you can see we have installed Shad CN and CLI, uh, initialized Shad, C uh, Shad CN, and yeah, just some app structure here. Uh, so I'm just going to show you how I am using these prompts I have created here. We're going to take a look at the backend prompt later too, uh, but let's just get into it. So you can see I have a folder named Fluxy here, and I have a folder named Prompts. So what we're going to do now is uh, we can open a terminal, right? And then we can just do Control L to kind of get into our chat, right? And here it kind of comes why how I've been using this prompt. So let's select the Chad CN markdown file here, right? The one we have here. Uh, and then I can just do execute prompt. So now you can see here we get this bash commands here, right? And this is very helpful because now we can just, uh, if you see here, we have something called run here. So when I click on run here, you can see these uh, commands are getting executed in my terminal. Okay, so we can just install all of those. These are just the default uh, Next.js settings. Uh, that's fine for now. And I'm just going to continue using this uh, bash commands here. So you can see, see the front end, right? I'm going to install Chad CN CLI. Just click run there. And this all will be executed in my terminal. Super easy to use. Initialize Chad CN, right? Uh, and you can see, okay, so we'll get some configuration components. We're going to select New York. We're going to select sync. And we're going to select yes, right? Uh, okay, and then we can check if our app structure looks like this. So if I go over here now, you can see I can go to my front end. Uh, and I can start mimicking this, right? So I can create here uh, a, co a folder name components. Right, and I can create. We have a folder named lib, and here we have the utils. Right, I can create a folder named styles. Okay, so we're gonna put our global CSS into styles, uh, and in our components, we're gonna create a new folder that is called UI, uh, and that is basically it. This is the setup we want for our chat CN front end. And since we kind of moved the global CSS to our styles folder here, I think we have to go to layout. We might have to change this. So let's do maybe like at, I don't know, styles, uh, something like this. I think this should work, right? So we have to update that import. And then we can run our final command, npm run dev. We can just click on this. And hopefully now we kind of have our um, shed C and uh, yeah, good. Okay, so this is a good start. Now we are kind of ready to move on, start adding some components, really hone in on our image generation app. So let me just take you over to the Shad CN layout and we can start picking some components. But first, let's make some changes to our home page. So this is kind of the standard Vercel Next.js page, right? So I want to start a new chat. Uh, I just want to have selected my page here, right? And um, Let's do a prompt here. So let's just do the prompt. Create a simple dark theme page with the title Flux Uncensored Image Generator. Let's hit chat here or enter. So hopefully this is going to give us a new code for our page TSX, right? Okay, that looks pretty standard. So we can apply this. Okay. Remember to save. And now we can kind of go back here. Yeah, that is fine uh, for now. I think I want it black, right? So let me just quickly change that. So I'm just going to follow up with just the H1 title and make it black with white text. So just a pretty standard basic site, right? So here we made some few changes. Let's apply that. Accept, save, go here. Okay, that's a good start, I think, for app. Super clean, very easy to use, right? Okay, so now we are kind of ready to start picking our components. So let's head over here to uh, the homepage Shad CN slash UI. I will leave a link in the description to this. Now we can click on components here. And if we scroll down, you can see we have something called components. And here we can start selecting components, right? You can see we have a drop down menu, right? We have data tables. So these are kind of pre built components we can use in our app. So this is super helpful, right? So let's just start with the text area for our prompt, right? So let's say we wanted this simple component here, right? We have a code. What you can see here, we can install this from the CLI. 
So now you can see I can just copy this here. So let me copy that, head back to cursor and just go down here. Let's see it into our front end and let's paste this command. All right? You can close the chat for now. And you can see this was now installed in our components UI field here, right? Here is the code we installed. And this is ready to be used now. So now let me try to integrate this into our main page, this text area, right? Uh, for that, I just want to go back to our chat. I want to just have a new file here, right? So let me try to set that up. And to do that, we're going to select some context. So we're just going to add text area component. We're going to add our page TSX done. And just use the prompt, include that text area component in our page TSX, please. Use the input field, enter your prompt. So for now, we can just select the, these individual components. This should be fine, right? And you can see we can select our page TSX, apply this, accept. So you can see we are importing this here now. Okay, good. So if we go back to our app now, boom, you can see here we have a nice text uh, input. You can see enter your prompt. So I think this is a super smooth start for our image generator. And yeah, let's just start adding some more components. Uh, I want to head over to the backend we are going to create so I can kind of explain to you why we select the components we are going to use in this. So let's head over to replicate and take a quick look at the backend API. So the image generator we will be using today is from Black Forest Labs. We're going to select Flux, right? So we have three models. We can do Pro, Schnell and Flux Dev. I think we're just going to focus on Dev. We might add a Schnell model too. We'll see. So if we go into here now, you can see um, if we select... Uh, you can see here we have different sliders we can use here, right? So we have Prompt Strength. We have Inference Steps. Quality Output. I kind of want to focus on that. We have aspect ratios we can select. We definitely want to do that. We might even try to do like an image to image uh, input. We'll see. And yeah, so you can see there are some things we want to select here. We have the disabled safety checker that we want to add, right? Uh, so what I wanted to start on, you can see if we go to our API here, you can see here is the stuff we want to select. But now we are working on the front end. That means that... I really want these sliders in our app, right? So let's say we can have the quality uh, output slider. So this goes from 0 to 100. So if we go back to ShadCN now, you can see there's a component that is called slider. Uh, this is pretty neat, right? So if you turn off dark mode here, you can see, yeah, this is something we want. So let's copy that, right? So back to cursor and install this component. Uh, so you can see now this is going to pop up in this, uh, yeah, here's the slider component, super easy to import. So what we can do now is, uh, you can see we have selected our slider here, and we can just do a simple prompt here. So let's just do also add the slider component, uh, the value should be from 0 to 100, remember we checked that, name of the slider should be quality. So let's try to keep it as simple as this and see if this adds our slider uh, into our page, right? Uh, and then we can move them around later, right? So let's just apply this new code. You can see, okay, so we are importing this. Let's save that. Uh, and you can see we have some uh, selectors here, min max, we have a slider. So if we go to our app now, boom, we have the slider. But you can see, uh, I kind of want to display what values we are selecting here. So let me quickly adjust this. So I'm just going to do, I want the slider to display the values. Just a simple prompt here. And we should probably just update our slider TSX a bit. Okay, so let's check this. Save. And uh, let's uh, fix our page here a bit. Uh, let's go back now. Boom, you can see. So if I turn off the dark mode here, that is off, right? You can see, now we can select uh, from 0 to 100. That is something we want, right? That is pretty cool. Uh, next up, I think we actually, uh, if you go back here now, we kind of want, um, I think we want also a slider for prompt strength. You can see this goes from 0 to 1. 
So let's create uh, a slider for prompt strength uh, while we are at it, right? So let's just go back to cursor. Uh, let's uh, do like great. Let me write a prompt here. So I'm just gonna do also add a slider for prompt strength. The value is zero to one, okay? So we're just gonna add a new slider with value. Accept that, save, go back here. Boom, we have it, right? So you can see this goes from zero to one, right? Pretty neat. I like the team, I think it looks pretty good. And the next step is, I think we want some kind of drop down menu to actually select the aspect ratios, right? So if we go back here now to our backend, right? You can see there is some aspect ratios we can select here. I don't think we need all of this, uh, but let's just do a few of them. Uh, but for this, I think we want like a drop down menu. So remember, if we are here on um, ShadCN, uh, let's select, there's something called a drop down menu here. So this is something you click on and you select. I think that's fine, All right? So let's just copy this and install that component, the drop down menu. Great. Okay, boom, that popped up here. Uh, okay, we have some small issues here. Let me see what that is. Uh, okay, but that's fine for now, I think. Uh, but now, uh, if we go back to Black Forest Labs, you can see here we have some different aspect ratios, right? So let me just write up a prompt for this and see if we can make this work. So here I'm just gonna go with the prompt. Next step is to add a drop down menu where the user can select aspect ratios. I kind of give it a name. Let's add three different options, 69, 916 and 11. Add this to our page, please. So I'm just gonna try this and see if it works. And let's see now. Okay, so we are importing this. So hopefully this is gonna work. You can see it's trying to import a button here. So this is uh, quite important, right? So you can see it kind of expects that we have imported this button, uh, but you can see we don't have that. Uh, okay, so let's go back to uh, Chad CN here and let's install this button here. We might need that anyway, right? So let's grab that and let's just install this component before we add this to our page. Okay, that was installed. You can see we got the button here now. So let's apply this and save that. So you can see it now we kind of lost that. Uh, let's take a look at our app now. Boom, you can see here we have the aspect ratio. We can select, right? So it was not the best button. It's a bit wide, right? So let's try to change this uh, ratio a bit. I think it's a bit big. Let's try to fix that. So let's just try and make the button smaller to make it align with the aspect ratio title. That could be like a prompt that is gonna work to make this super easy to add, right? Uh, but let's see now. Okay, so we only have to change our page here. So you can see we kind of added some, yeah, flex items here. Let's see. Uh, I think that's fine. That was not too bad, right? Okay, so we have uh, a field to import, enter our prompt. We can select quality, prompt strength. Is there anything else we need now? Let's go back to the API and take a quick look. Okay, so I think there's two things we want. Uh, we want the output format so we can select between these image types, right? And I want this checkbox for the disable safety checkers. So this is a Boolean value, right? So for this, uh, I think we want to add like a checkbox. So if we go back to ChatCN here, let's see if we find checkbox. Uh, okay, that's pretty good. So let's uh, grab that, install this, right? So it should be pretty smooth. Uh, I think we're just gonna start a new chat now, okay? Uh, okay, so you see we got our checkbox here. That's pretty good. Uh, and we wanna add that um, uh, 
image file uh, type selector. So let me just come up with a new prompt here now and try to add these last components. So you can see here, I just added uh, the page, the drop down menu, the checkbox, add a new drop down menu under the aspect ratio selector. This should be called select image format, add the three options PNG, JPG, and WebP, right? Under this, we want a checkbox that is called disabled safety check, implement these changes, hit enter. And hopefully this is going to update our app and that should be pretty much all we want now before we start working on the back end. So let's see now we want to change up our page, right? So let's do some changes. We imported the checkbox. Great. Uh, I think that should be pretty much it. So let's save this now. Let's go back to our app here. Uh, okay, that's fine. I think you can see we have this, we have this, we have the disabled uh, safety check. Okay, great. Uh, I guess we could have, I think this is fine. I'm pretty happy with this, right? So if we turn off this now, you can see we have this. We have these selectors here. Looks pretty good, we have this. And I think the next part now is gonna be to start, in, start working on the back end so we can actually start creating some different images here and see if we can make this app working. To set up our backend, uh, I want to go back to our prompts here because I have created a markdown file here that kind of has this instruction to set up like a pretty basic uh, Node.js backend uh, setup here that kind of can speak to our front end, right? So I have all these instructions uh, pretty much uh, as we had before, right? And we're going to run uh, this uh, kind of the same style as we did with our ShadCN prompt. So let's just do that and see if we can actually get this backend going. So again, I'm just going to add this here, right? And then I'm going to do execute the prompt. Uh, I'm going to hit uh, enter. So let's just start at the top here. So we just want to go back here a bit, uh, and let's run this. So we're going to make our folder called backend, right? Okay, we got that. We're going to initialize the Node.js project. We're gonna install Express and Course. We're just gonna follow this. So uh, I can't do this uh, touch here because I'm on Windows. So uh, I have to do, I'm on PowerShell. So I'm just gonna go to my backend folder, new file, index.js. And we're gonna add this content here to our index.js. Great, save that. Uh, we're going to call uh, name uh, a new file that is called roots.js. Here we're going to add this code snippet. Let's accept and save that. And then we can start the server. So let's test it now. Okay, so this is running. Good. And uh, that is a simple setup for our backend. Uh, but now we kind of need to start working on. Um, integrating the backend uh, image generation with our front end. So let me show you the plan I have to do that. So what I like to do at this stage, uh, I just uh, like to start having some kind of version control, right? Uh, because it's annoying if you lose uh, some of your project here now, because it's quite annoying to start uh, doing this again, right? So yeah, let's just do this. So I'm just gonna add this. Okay, so I'm just gonna push this. Uh, great, and uh, now we can continue, right? Uh, yeah, let's do that. So now I wanna head back to Black Forest Lab uh, on Replicate. Uh, I wanna go to the API. I wanna select um, Node, right? To be honest, I just wanna go here, right? So here you can see these are the API instructions we have here. So we kind of want to install Replicate. So let's just do that. So let's go to our backend here, right? And let's just install npm install Replicate. Okay, that was done. Good. And now uh, the Replicate token, we are going to set that in an env file, I think. So what I want to grab now is uh, this documentation here, right? And I want to open up a chat here, right? Let's do, uh, uh, I don't know, let's call it replicate image gen docs, paste in this, right? So we have some documentation here, that is great. 
And the next step is gonna be to start imp uh, integrating this into our backend. So I think the prompt is gonna be something like this. So here I'm just gonna try the prompt. I upload the documentation for the image generator. Next step is to integrate the backend with our front end. We want to generate image button on the front end. We also need to display the generated images. All the settings on our front end must integrate with our back end. Let's start implementing our back end with our front end use uh, for our Flux image generator app, please. So I'm going to try this, and here we are going to use the control enter, so that is going to look at our full code base. So this is searching our files, reading all our files, and hopefully now we can start integrating our back end with our front end, right? Uh, okay, so you can see uh, we want to install this. Uh, we already have installed replicate, we need to install .env, okay that's good. So we want to create an env file in our backend, so .env, here we're gonna set this uh, replicate api token, right? That's great, uh, I'm gonna grab that soon, I'm gonna show you where you can find that. So we have our index here, we're gonna update this, okay. Let's save that. So you can see now we kind of took all uh, of these uh, settings or you can see here now guidance is set to quality. Uh, that is not correct. Uh, we have to move that. Aspect ratio, that's correct. Output format is correct. Prompt struct is correct. And this is correct. And the only thing we need to change here is need to move this to output quality. All right, so we remember to change that. We need to update our page. So now we're going to go to our front end app and change up this. Okay, interesting. Uh, that should be pretty much it. Now we're going to start both. So remember, uh, we want to change up. The only thing we wanted to change was in our index here. We want to move quality down here, right? Uh, I don't know, guidance, let's just set this empty for now, I think. Uh, or let's find uh, what kind of number we should have here. So you can see here the guidance is set 3.5, so let's just do that. 3.5, that should be fine. Uh, okay, uh, I think we're gonna try this now and see where we are at. I am expecting some errors uh, at the beginning now. Uh, but let's just fire up our backend. So to do that, we can just do node index.js. Okay, so our server is running. That is good. Uh, our front end is also running. Great. Uh, let's go to the app now. Refresh. Uh, let's do a cat. And select one to one PNG quality. This doesn't work, that's a bit strange. Okay. Uh, let's click generate image. So I think that was an error. Let's check our console. Okay, so we have some errors here. Uh, let's grab this. I think we're just gonna start a new chat. And I get, did we get an error here? Okay, so we got an error here too. That's better, I think. Ah, I forgot, we have to set our API key here, right? So let me show you where you can find this. So over here on Replicate, just go to your user, API tokens, and yeah, you can see your token here. So let me just copy that, and let me paste this into my env file here. And let's try to restart our server, right? Uh, let's try now. We can, of course, just refresh this. Let's do png. Okay, this looks a bit better. Hey, yes, perfect. So that is great. Let's see if the disabled safety check work. Uh, let's try like, I don't know. Uh, let me think. Let's just try Taylor Swift. I don't know. Okay, so that didn't generate an image. Let's try to check off this and try again. Hey, that worked. Okay, so this disabled safety check is working. Perfect. Uh, let's uh, fix these sliders again so we can actually see the values. So you can actually see here in the server, prediction fail, all generated images contain NSFV content, right? Okay, so yeah, 
I guess the disabled thing work. Uh, but now let's try to fix up our slider issue. So let me just do a prompt here and let's try to fix that. So make sure when we adjust the slider component in page, the values will change output quality and prompt strength in index.js. Create a simple print to confirm that the values change, please. Again, I'm gonna do control enter to see if we can actually get like a confirmation that we are actually changing this value when we move the slider because I think that's pretty important, right? Okay, so we're gonna log this in the console. Ah, oh, that's fine. Uh, so that is pretty much all we're gonna do for now. Uh, let me restart the server to update this. Uh, okay, uh, let's just refresh this. Uh, let's do console. Uh, let's set this to 75.7. And do uh, cat. Okay, so okay, so you can see uh, seventy five point seven. Okay, yeah, I guess that was pretty good, right? Let's try to do forty six. Okay, seems to be working. Uh, I guess I couldn't see any changes. Let's try to set it low. Maybe I'm not quite sure. Uh, but I, I'm pretty happy. Let's try this um, 69 here. Let's see if that works. Yeah, that worked. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I think it looks pretty smooth. Uh, the next step I want to do is I want to try to actually do the image to image input. Uh, let me think about this, how we can do this and see if we can actually get this uh, image to image uh, set up here in our app. Okay, so first uh, I'm just gonna push uh, this to again, so we kind of have this saved, right? Great. And uh, if we go to Flux now, right? So you can see down here there is so, uh, something. If we go to Node.js, do we have some schema here? Uh, API schema uh, image URI, right? So. Input image uh, for image mode, the aspect ratio for the output will match this image. Uh, okay, so that's pretty interesting, right? Uh, so, uh, string image. Okay, so I kind of want to upload an image. So I think we're going to try to do that. If that's possible. I'm not 100% sure, but if we go back here now, you can see... Uh, enter a URL, paste a file, or drag a file over, right? So it should be possible. But I think we just want to keep it as simple as possible now and just use our URL, right? So let's go back to uh, Shatian here and uh, let's try just to find somewhere we can put in our URL. And uh, let's add that. Uh, let's kind of set up the back end and see if we can get this image to image. Uh, working. So I think we're just gonna use this input component. So I just copy this. I install that So now you can see we have our input component here, right? And here uh, I think we just want to add a URL, right? So let's go back to our chat, right? Uh, let me just fire up a prompt here uh, Let's add some context from the Black Forest Labs uh, documentation too. So let's just do the um, let's just do the um, The front end first place here. I think I think that should be fine. So let's go to our page, right? Uh, let's see, we can do some small changes, right? If we have to. So we imported our input, great. Uh, is that all we have to do? Let's take a quick look. So now you can see we have an image URL. Uh, okay, I think that's pretty good. I like this. Uh, uh, I guess we could have a preview of that. But for now, let's just keep it like this. Uh, let's kind of move on to the back end part, right? So let's go over to Black Forest Lab. Let's grab kind of the input schema here, part here, right? Okay, so let's grab that. Uh, let me just fire up some 
some documentation here and then we can take it from there. Okay, so you can see I pasted in the documentation, uh, add the image parameter to our index.js. This will integrate with the input component in page.tsx where the user can input an image URL, implement these changes to my app, please. Uh, let's do a control enter here. So hopefully now we're going to change up our index, right, to kind of add some kind of parameter here where we can input an image URL, right? So let's see here now. Uh, I don't see it straight away, uh, but let's see now. Okay, so image, add this line. Uh, yeah, okay, that looks pretty good. That was kind of what I was looking for. Was that all? So we'll accept this change, save that. Uh, let's go to our page. Uh, let's make a small change here, all right? And hopefully that should be be it if we go back to our app now uh, we still have this so what we have to do now is grab an image URI, URL and see if this actually works okay so I uploaded this image <laughs> prison mic uh, so let's grab that let's paste it in here uh, let's just do the uh, a guy on CCTV in a Balloon shop. I don't know. Okay, let's keep it like this. Uh, disable this. So let's see now. The prompt strength here is a bit important, I think. Okay, so now we're just gonna regenerate the image, right? Uh, if we crank this up to 0.6, maybe. Let's see if something changes. Let's watch his face here. Uh, okay, that changed. That was pretty cool, right? What if we put it to like 0.9? Is this a CCTV prompt gonna come into play here? Uh, okay, so that was just a balloon shop. Let's do 0.8. Uh, <laughs> it's trying. It's pretty cool, but it's not perfect, right? So I guess we had to play around with some parameters to make this work very good. But I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Uh, we also have, uh, let's just copy this image address. Uh, let's do, I don't know. We can try to add Taylor Swift running down the street, right? So if we do like low prompt strength, that's just going to probably recreate the image. Uh, but if we change it up, maybe something else could happen, right? Uh, well, that was a bit strange. Let's do 0.9. So you can see we kind of changed the format to the aspect ratio to whatever image we put in, right? Uh, okay, that's something, right? That looks like her, I think. Let's do one more before we kind of move on to kind of our final part here. So let's see, is this going to work again? Uh, let's see now. I think this is good, right? Yeah. This is pretty cool. I think this was very cool. Uh, what if we change this to PNG? What's the difference? Let's do one more and then we move on, right? Okay. Yeah. I like this. I think this was cool, right? Pretty awesome. Okay, super happy with this. Uh, oh, I think we need to test. Does this work without an input? Uh, let's try that. Maybe we have to have an input now. Because that needs to be optional. Right? You can see... Uh, no. We need to fix that. Okay, so we have to fix that and then we can kind of do the final touches. Okay, so here you can see the error we got uh, is an in input validation fail because it was empty, right? So when we run our image generator now, if the input URL is empty, we get an error. So I pasted in that. We need to have the option that the user can leave this field empty. If the field is empty, ignore this parameter, please. Let's do a control enter here and let's see if it can fix this because the user has to have the option to leave this uh, blank, right? Uh, okay, so we're gonna look at our page here first. So let's try to apply this. 
Okay. Then we're gonna go to our index. I think I wanna try this just to see. So let's restart this. Let's see if this compiles now. Uh, a cat, right? I don't really care. Okay, so that worked. That was great. So what happens if we put in this URL now? Does it still work? Perfect. That is exactly what I wanted. How fast was that? <laughs> Look at this. This was funny. Uh, okay, perfect. I'm super happy. I think we're just going to do some final touches and then our app is complete, right? Okay, so I think the final thing I want to do is I want to add a bit more interesting background here just for fun. So let's just do like a quick screenshot here, right? Uh, let's just do it like this, right? Let's copy this. Uh, let's go back to cursor here. Now we can kind of do paste in our image. Okay, so we have that here, right? We can collapse that for now. Uh, let me come up with a prompt here because I kind of want to change up the background a bit uh, to make it a bit more interesting, right? So I'm just going to try. This is the UI of our app. All function is working. It's complete. I just want to add a faint purple wave animation in the background of the app. Can you integrate this, please? So this is kind of going to be the final touch if it works. Just to make it a bit more interesting. So let's see what kind of suggestions we get now. Uh, hopefully it's just going to be on our front end here, right? So we're going to add a new component called wave background in the components folder. Uh, okay, we can do that. Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's apply this. Okay. Let's accept that. Save it. Uh, we want to add some CSS in our styles. Global CSS. Right. See the diff here, yes, let's accept. And we want to go to my page. We want to import this. Okay, and let's update it. Accept this. Okay, so let's go back here now, yeah. That was pretty cool, right? Uh, let's try it out. A cat. Let's set it to 100. I don't care. Uh, let's do 916. PNG. Disable. Generate. So hopefully uh, the image is laid on top of the animation now. Let's see. I hope so. Yeah, that looks great, right? I think that's it. I think I'm happy with this. So yeah, pretty cool project if you ask me. Um, and again, super smooth to work with uh, cursor. I'm just kind of addicted to this. <laughs> so I'm going to do a few videos going forward where we do like the app of the week, AI app of the week. And of course, if you wanted to add like some open AI uh, functionality in this, you can kind of rewrite your prompts, right? There's a bunch of do you can do with this uh, template. So I'm going to be uploading this to my members GitHub if you are interested in continue working on this project. Uh, so just become a member of the channel. I will do some tutorials for members only too if you are interested in some more uh, extra content that is a bit more casual, right? Uh, I think it's going to be pretty interesting going forward to try to mass produce apps. We're gonna, I'm working on a template that is gonna set up a very easy Stripe integration so you can uh, do a, like a credit system. So here we could have like a credit system. So each time you generate an image, uh, you can pay for some credits, right? Uh, but yeah, pretty happy. We fixed this uh, uncensored image generator from Flux using Shad CN. That was pretty smooth. And yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. So if you enjoy this, give the video a like. Watch out for the next video. Subscribe if you want to do that. So yeah, thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Look out for more. And as you can see in the background here, I have moved. So a bit of a new environment for me, but I think it's working out pretty good. So yeah, thank you for tuning in. Have a great day and we speak soon.